Hello and welcome back to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. So today we're going to be painting on a 15 by 12 canvas and um, I've already put uh, a gesso and a ground on there and I've taken the liberty of putting an outline on but before we get to the canvas let's have a quick look at the palette. I've got, I'm going to use a selection of brushes today again from short flats um, I might even use a little foliage brush, um, I, a couple of details and a script lining brush which I'm going to put one side there. Um, the paints I'm going to be using today are yellow, that's my homemade yellow, but you can use any yellow paint, any acrylic yellow paint you want. Um, I just make my own paints now, it's easier. Um, I've got some um, raw sienna, not raw, yes it is raw sienna. <laughs> I got some phyllo green. And I've got some peppermint type of green. Um, I, I, I call that valley green. That's what I make um, in my tubes as well. So I make a couple of different greens. Um, and, I, and I quite like that pepperminty looking green. It reminds me of the Welsh Valleys. Anyway, I diverse. I make my own ultramarine blue now. I use that um, from a pure lapis lazuli. And I can add some reds to it and things like that. So I, I've made a nice warm ultramarine blue myself now. Which I quite like. So... Um, but any ultramarine blue, any paints in fact, whatever paints you've got work well. Um, just use those colours. Um, I got some white, some black and some burnt umber. As you know, I use that um, quite regular. So I'm just going to pick up a small short flat. And I always moisten my brush a little bit first and just wipe that onto the palette like that. The reason I do that is because the moisture gets absorbed into the um the, the 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 bristles and uh, it doesn't dry out so quick so lo looking at the diagram there we go there's my original drawing there's my original drawing um so i thought this would be nice um now this uh particular image is available in shutterstock so go along there i'm actually i actually um get these royalty free images now um so i thought right okay so i i've seen the picture and i thought I'm going to have a go at this one and see we, we, what we can't do. So I'm going to get some white and I'm going to put some white in the centre there like that. You might think that's strange, Clive. You've, you've put a ground on and now you're painting white in there. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to try and make a nice bright spot. There you go. I picked up a bit of burnt number from my sketch i can just put that on there it doesn't matter just squish it in squish it in a little bit of not so bright but it doesn't matter we can get around that one okay so i'm just going to put a little bit of white in here and there and there and here um i've got my jumper on today because it's, it's quite cold in the studio and it's been snowing uh here in wales i'll put a little picture down there for you to show you um not a lot of snow it's not a lot of snow compared to a lot of places around the world but it's enough to bring the uk to a standstill which is really daft, really, if you look at places like America and Russia and, and all these other places. Now, I quite like, I've gone to like putting my paint on thinly like this and leaving a little bit of that canvasy showing through. Uh, I don't know why I started doing that. It's just developed. And um, I thought, well, it's nice to get that to come through. And recently I've been playing with grounds and stuff and I'm thinking well it's nice to get that colour from the ground to come through and that's why I did it um, I'm gonna get in some feel green this is quite a strong green so be careful so I need to lighten that down to a light green look at a lovely colour it's a lovely colour green lovely for doing seascapes and, and and things like this it really is I'm just gonna put a bit of that colour in like this loosely like that and I'm leaving some brush marks. I'm just going to place it on like that. Put a bit of this pepperminty green in as well. Just flicking that in. I'm not going to over brush this. I want some brush marks to show through. There you go. Lovely green colour. Because they're, they're sitting in a tree and they're looking out at the world going past. These are two lovely kids they could be my grandchildren in fact they are sitting there and they're wondering 
what's going on in the world and they're looking down and seeing all these people running around like headless chickens they're really yellow and they're, and they're thinking oh it's lovely up here watching the world go by it's a bit of yellow even a bit of that background comes through it's a wonderful thing ground is a wonderful thing if you if you can do that use the canvas to its advantage we don't do that we, we we tend to cover things up too much sometimes we really do i'm going to get some more phyllo green over there i'm going to get some burnt umber to it got a little bit of contamination in my burnt umber but that doesn't that doesn't matter there we go and i'm going to darken up some areas like this and I'm just plodding it on like that plonk it on plonk it on and have fun just make shapes who says that painting has to be f nice and smooth and things like this it doesn't have to be does it who said it has to be it looks like as if there's a little bit of sky coming through there now and just put marks here and there and there and here and here and there um, put it where you want to really put it where you want to really I'm just gonna rinse my brush very quickly I'm still using the same brush I've gone to use just one brush lately I don't know why I just just ease of use I got so used to using uh, painting in front of the camera now I tend to I tend just to make life easy for myself and if you can just use one brush then just use one brush there's no law saying you can't just use one brush let's get a bit of that green down there now just make it look leaf like doesn't have to be perfect let's get a little bit of ultramarine blue to this green Make that into a nice dark blue green. Even bring a bit of this yellow ochre or rose yellow, I should say, into that. There we are. Let's get that. Like that. Couple of lines down there, like that. It's looking pretty good. I quite like that. Uh, wash my brush again very quickly. Use, um, if you're going to use water for thinning your paints, I use a medium mix, that's a, a resin, a blend that I use for thinning my paints to stop under binding, which is available on the website www.clay5art.co.uk. But if you're just using water, use a clean pot of water and then another pot then for washing up your brush. Um, that's what I recommend you do because you don't want to contaminate your paint. So I'm mixing up a bit more white into the green, into that feel of green, and getting that nice colour. Let's get a bit of yellow to it. Let's, let's sparkle it up a bit. Let's put a bit of yellow in there and go across. Now, but you've seen I went down that way just now. Now I'm going across this way. And there's a reason for that. Let's get some feel of green. Just on the tip of that brush. Go down again. Get some of this dark green now. And maybe not dark enough. Let's just put a little bit more black to it. A bit of feel of green. Touch of white. Play around with some colours. Play around. You don't know what's going to work until you try. I quite like the way I quite like the way this paint shows through or the canvas shows through the the, the the paint I should say I quite like that effect I really do every um, so often I'm picking up a bit of kitchen paper and I'm just wiping my brush like that just to get the paint off it and without actually um, washing my brush and quite a dirty painter in fact um, but I, as long as you're using the 
the colours roughly around about the same tone, you should be okay. So I'm just going to put a bit of light in here and there. Just dragging the brush across. Just picking up a little bit of colour. I don't want to balance this a touch. You see I'm quite loose about it. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to let that area dry. And I'm still using the same brush. I'm going into some burnt umber. I'm going to add some black to the one side of it because I want to darken the one side up. And now I'm just going to go in. Like this. A little bit of moisture. A little bit of white paint. And these lines can be nice and sharp now. Get a bit more white paint. Here we want a bit lighter in places. I put a bit of dark on there first to show the light off. Heavy loaded brush. Nice and thick. Maybe a little bit too much paint on my brush, but. It all helps add to the effect. There we go. Still using the same brush. I'm going to have to change my brush in a second. And this is a long old tree branch trunk. Maybe even a root or something. This coming from the side of the bank. I'm going to pick it up with that dark black colour. Put in some dark colour underneath there, like this. Because that's in shade. We get a bit of moisture it's just on the tip of my brush. If you're having trouble with it flowing, just pick a little tiny bit of moisture. I mean just a little tiny bit. It's basically our tree branch. So let's get a bit of white just on the tip of the brush now and bring some highlight into this trunk like as if there's light catching on it. There, like that. Bit of light in between them. A bit more light down there. Well, the wind is picking up uh, quite a lot out there today, and it is really cold. It's actually minus five degrees centigrade. We've got the heaters on in the studio, but I still got to have to have my jumper on. Okay, so it's starting to come together. We've got that distancey look. Um, I like the way the paint breaks or the canvas breaks through the paint. So you don't have to put it on thick. You can put it on as thick as you want, really. Um, but that's entirely up to you. That's your choice. I leave that decision to you what to do there. Now I'm just going to pick up. Um, I'm just going to pick up a short flat, I think. I've got a little filbert brush, actually. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to use a filbert brush here. Um, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue and some white. You can see it's got a bit of a red tone to it. I'm going to have to use my stick. I'm going to bring some... blue into this shirt this little boy has got on You 
want to change things, then change them. If you want a different color shirt, maybe you want um, a red shirt. Red and green go nice, nice and well together. Um, orange goes well with blues. And um, yellows go nice with purples because they're complements. So we'll just paint that in. Nice blue, nice blue type of jumper there. Now uh, what we'll do with the girl, um, we'll get a little bit of black to the bl um, ultramarine blue. And we'll make that into a really dark blue. Or a shade, that's what they say. And we'll give her a nice dark blue top like this. Just take your time. Don't try to do paintings in the same speed as you see, not just myself, but other YouTube artists do, because you're all going to be at different skill levels and it's all going to take you different times to master certain skills. So don't be despondent if you can't get it right the first time. Just keep practicing, and I can guarantee. One day, it's just going to go click. You have a little, little light go on in your head and you go, yeah, now I know what I'm doing. Now we're starting to look like something. I'm going to get some of this raw sienna. I'm going to get a bit of the burnt amber to go with it. There you go. So I mixed a bit of burnt ember with some raw sienna and now I'm going to go ahead and put in the first coat of hair colour. Might be wondering what that is. That's a little quiff. I used to have a little quiff. Did I start losing my hair? <laughs> This could be brother and sister. And we will do the sister's hair, because that's what they are. I've decided they're brothers and sister. We'll do the sister hair in the same colour. Like this. A bit different to what we normally paint in the studio, but I thought it would be nice to do something a little bit different. And you want to go ahead and download this tracing. You will find it in the shop under digital downloads. Uh, www.clive5art.co.uk. Not every lesson has got um, downloads. Um, there is another page there where you can find the older downloads that I've been doing. Um, so please, by all means, go and please, by all means, go and download that. Now, I was just testing to see if that's dry. I'm hoping it's dry enough because what I'm going to do is get um, my brush, making sure it's nice and clean. I'm just washing it out quickly. Just going to put my pot of medium mix there. I'm going to get some my medium mixer can thin this down as much as I like because it's not going to affect the the paint. Hopefully put a little bit of white to it. And now I'm gonna try and lightly go. Let's make it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna lightly go over this area like this. Get rid of that. Dark green in there. Just going to pull across a couple of little marks like that.
in a mix of white. My big head gets in the way occasionally. Um, now I'm going to decide. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to actually. I tell you what. I'm going to actually do is I'll just wash my brush. I want to get a bit more of this white. Get a bit more white over there. Th thin it down a touch. I want to try and bring out a bit more. I'm going to go on there. <laughs> I just want to try and brighten up a spot if I can. Contaminated my white now. I'm just trying to brighten a, a spot up. Is that okay? I should be okay. So a neutral spot there. I'll do. Let me have a look. Yes, I think I'll be okay. I want to go into the hair now. Um, we used a burnt umber and we used yellow oak, uh, raw sienna. Burnt umber and yellow, raw sienna. I want to darken that up a touch. I'm using this little filbert brush. It's not dark enough. I had a touch of black to it. Because we want to put the shadow in. Under the hairline there like that. These things sell really well on craft fairs. People like this type of stuff. You could do this for your grandchildren. You could you could paint this for your children, couldn't you? And say, look, this is the grandkids, um, in a different way. <laughs> so put a bit of colour there like that. We're going to do the same too. We'll call him Harry. We'll call this one Erin. There we are, Harry and Erin. Just playing a bit of colour into the bottom of the hairline and please 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 take your time please take your time and just enjoy the the process of this painting it's important you do that tend to rush things a little bit too much. I picked up a bit of plain raw sienna now. I pick. I, I tend to rush things sometimes because um, the camera really because the and, and I shouldn't, but I do. I I got this thing that I got to do videos within a certain time scale, and and I shouldn't have to worry about that really. I'm just getting the hair built up um, with just a couple of different tones of paint. Um, I can add a little bit of white over there now. Um, bring a little bit of white over there. So I got a, a, another tone of colour, another raw sienna and white. And you know you can put you can put the highlights in then. Maybe I need to wait for it to dry just a touch. I think you can put the highlights in a touch like that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Again, raw sienna, straight in. Mixing it with that. Darker tone that we put in. If you're quick, you can do it. If not, just do one head at a time. So if you're having trouble, just do one one head at a time. When you get as confident and as um, experienced as myself, 
you get to know when these colors are going to dry on you um you've got a a, a built-in sensor in a clock in your mind that you know when this paint is going to dry and when it's not going to dry so sometimes you get caught out as i said we, we're only human beings but 99 percent of the time we can we can judge when this paint is going to dry now we're going to let that dry off and we're going to move to the next section which is um harry's shirt so i'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and i'm going to thin it down with a bit of water or medium and I'm just going to go in now with a darker pure ultramarine blue over this shirt and using it into a into a wash type of consistency and just bring in some colour into this shirt. You can add a little bit of white here and there. We can add a small amount of white just to put some highlight into the shirt. As we as we build in this shirt we can just add the highlight in. So it's like a wet on wet type of painting technique as we come down here because this is going to be more in shadow because it's this shirt is folding over the branch that they're sitting on. So we want to put a bit more shadow there. In fact, we can get some of this dark colour that we did Erin's um, shirt with and put a bit of that in. Or even pick up a little bit of black, maybe. Just to add into that shadow area there like that. ultramarine blue blending all that together back into this whitish colour add a little bit of white to it let's pick up some highlight Just keep building and building. Keep trying to keep sharp edges on on these clothes because that's what's going to stand out. You've got no depth of field really, here. so we need to concentrate on shadows and bits of light catching and things like that, just to give us the the illusion that we're painting a rounded object onto a flat surface that's what you're doing you're just giving it an illusion I'm not going to worry too much now I'm you concentrate on that a little bit more than I did so I'm going to go into this Erin's area now she's not going to need too much shadow because she's quite dark um, so we need to get a little bit of light coming through like that back into the dark Ultramarine blue and black. Don't worry if it doesn't flow, add a little bit of moisture to it. It's not, you don't worry about that area you're worried about this which is the focal point we can tighten up this branch as well because it's it's not not painted as well as i wanted it to so we can we can increase that a little bit what i'm going to do now is um i'm going to get a 
a detailing brush. Now I'm going to mix. I'm going to use some raw sienna. Mix a bit of yellow to it. Bit of brown. Let's take some white. I've got no red. I want to make a, like a skin tone colour. Ish. I don't want to put any red on my palette. Take another red. Hmm, looks like I might have to. Let's have a look. No, that's okay. We can work with that. It's not accurate, but I don't mind things like that. Let's put a bit of highlight. That's his hand there, this is a elbow. We can get a little bit of burnt ember, we can put some shadow in there. Ah, oh, maybe a bit of shadow there. Get a bit of highlight. Okay, a bit of highlight. A bit more. A bit of highlight. Always, um, oops, oops, I try not to, I don't talk very much when I concentrate, so I just enjoy the painting process if I was you, <laughs> but all I'm doing is just trying to get some sort of shape that you can see that maybe there's a, a elbow there. I hope you can see what I'm trying to do. There's a bit of shadow under our, our arm there. There's, 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 there's our elbow there. Um, this is just a little bit of shadow on the, on the part of his forearm. There we are. I hope you can see that. I hope you can. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of skin. Just under there like that. Give him a little you but there. I'm going to concentrate on this arm again now. Not skin colour, but it doesn't matter. This is not a portrait painting we are painting. This is a decorative piece of work. So it doesn't matter. It's your com it's your paint, and you decide what colour your skin tones are going to be. There we go. I'm going to pick a bit of this burnt down, but I'm going to put his leg in. Harry's leg is hanging down like that, and it's coming towards us a touch. His foot coming down there. Like that. Not a lot of detail, but that's fine. It's about colour. All of that is just a couple of different blocks of colour. So all that is. Just lighten section if we want. I'm not worried about it being too accurate, but as long as you, it looks like a foot hanging off the side of a branch, then that's 
we've done our job. We've done our job. There you go. Let's get a bit of... Shadow. Looks okay, I think. <laughs> Let's do the same with Erin. I emphasize, really emphasize, you take your time on something like this. 90% um, of my artwork that I do for YouTube gets thrown away destroyed, repainted. Um, so these lessons don't really last long in the studio. If I was going to paint this um, to sell, then I would spend a good couple of hours on it, actually. Um, I think that you could quite easily do that with something like this. Oops. Let's put a bit of dark. And then like that. Okay, so before I go back into the, um, before I go back into the, um, back into the hair and that, I'm going to go back into this brown, and I want to sharpen up this branch. Just tightening up sharp edges. Sometimes the canvas you show the canvas shows through and it works for you. Other times it, trust me it can work against you. So be very careful where you allow the canvas to actually show through. It's better to have an effect rather than there we go how's that look that looks pretty good can you see that that looks good i think i hope it does um right let's get um let's get a detail brush um now again i want to go back into this hair so i'm going into the burnt umber and raw sienna. I'm just going to pick up my stick because now I just want to put in some definite lines like that. Definite lines look like hair then. Spend a bit of time. I'm just going to do a few just to get the effect that I'm looking for. And when you're doing this, why not 
bring a few loose ones out just like that just to make it look a little bit more it's got a bit of a bob going on so just put a few little loose ones sticking out like that we could do the same with Harry just a little few loose ones like that just adjusting his neck out a little bit okay let's bring A little bit of hair coming through like that and again just a few little lines what we can do with Harry now let's get some wa white <laughs> water white <laughs> let's get some white let's get some white and some ultramarine blue now I want a quite a thin type of colour because now I just want to have a bit lighter than that surprising sometimes how, how light you've got to make this paint broken lines then Let's just put a little bit of patterning on. Onto his shirt. Like this. Broken lines are better than perfectly straight lines to catch the eye and you can see I bent the lines a little bit there just under his bottom that's going to give the effect that you know he's rounded and he's actually sitting there Just get rid of that line there and touch. What we can do is we can now get our script liner and just pick up some white. Doesn't have to be pure white. And hopefully we'll be able to put some ripples into this water. My cork's just come off my stick. Oh, fell in the paint. <laughs> Got a handful of paint now. Doesn't matter. Put some watermarks. There, like that. And I upload every Monday so if you like what you've seen today please leave a comment in the comment box below and um, ask me to do a painting if you want me to there's a little bit of ripple a little bit of shadow in the water there's a bit of reflection off the legs we need to put a bit of a branch shadow in there 
please comment like and share on the social media platforms um, please that helps me grow the channel and um, thank you very much please press the subscribe button that's all I need to say today so grab your brush have a great time and don't forget to click see you next time bye